sake. It's been an intense week. I've been working really hard. Um, and I just want to make sure that I get to rest a bit. Um, so let's see here. Hmm. So that's strange. I started the stream and it doesn't go live on YouTube. Uh, let's see here. Okay, good. It started super delay. Okay. I don't know why that happened. So thank you so much for anyone who was here. Uh, hopefully you can hear me now. I don't know why I... Sometimes StreamYard is so weird. I start a stream and just nothing happens on YouTube. And it's like 30 minutes, 30 seconds, a minute later, and the video still shows us um, waiting for the live to begin. But now I think you should be hearing me well, uh, and I definitely hear myself well. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. Let's see who's in the house. Then we'll get started. I will start right off the top of the stream. If you have any questions for me, put them in the chat. Uh, now's the time, because I will answer pretty much any questions you have about art, off topic, whatever you want, basically. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much, there are no, no, for letting me know that the sound is good because this, because I'm going to move away sometimes from the mic and it's a little more, you know, it's a little, what do you, I forgot the, the term for it, but when the mic is more sensitive to that and it's less of a big space, but hopefully you can, you will be able to hear me all throughout. Uh, so we have Swing Stitches here. Hi from Australia. Can you chat about edges, please? Um, if you have vids or if they're uh, more in depth in your course, thanks. Yeah, I have a couple of videos on edges. Let me see if I can find something good right off the bat here. Um, we run watercolor edges. I do have the one of my most viewed videos ever is probably um, the one on edges. Yeah, okay. So this, this has almost half a million views. Uh, so many of you have probably seen it. Oh, forget about the T because that's the specific timestamp. So you just rewind it back to the beginning um, after you hit the link. And then this one that I posted um, two years ago, I think, which also I think is decent. More edges. There we go. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, this is going to be about other ways of creating edges, that second video. Um, I do talk about it in my watercolor realism course. I talk about it a bit in the watercolor, in the frustration-free watercolor. Uh, but the watercolor realism goes more in depth uh, into edges. And, of course, there are other videos I didn't put here that show the technique. Uh, but let me know if you have a specific questions or something you're struggling with in particular. I'd be happy to help. It's just a technique I show in every video. And by the way, I forgot to show the actual message of it. So here we go. It's just something I use in every single video that I paint. You know, every painting tutorial um, relies somewhat on smoothing out edges and so on. Uh, Juanita Morgan, uh, good morning from rainy Kansas City, USA. Thank you for your video on washes and on vibrant colors. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I'm starting to really improve, I think, the, the teachability of the content. One thing I set as a goal for myself is to make my content more effective this year. So I find myself, if I find myself just wanting to post something for the sake of posting, I pause and I think to myself, how can I make that more effective? Um, you will see, I think, that a lot of it is going to improve. Um, Saturday's video especially is its a type of video, honestly, I did so far plenty of times, but I think the way it's framed is a lot better in terms of marketing the content. So I think Saturday's video, and I'll leave it as a surprise for now, um, is going to be a surprise to many people. Uh, and, and I think it may do very well, though I'm not sure. That's kind of a guess. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I did do the how to avoid overwork video that was really uh, got 110,000 or 111,000. That's a lot for me. Um, so that was really, really good. So thank you so much for watching. And uh, I think a lot of people have kind of uh, discovered me through that because I see a lot of comments of like first time watching and so on. Uh, hey, Christine, how are you doing? Hi from Minnesota. Hey, Josephine. Oh, my God, I just woke up and it hasn't started yet. First time that's happened. Yeah. And I'm starting earlier if you're not in, in uh, Eastern time. And I'm not sure what areas because of the daylight saving. But because we still haven't changed to our we, we still haven't finished with our winter clock and turn it into summer clock, which happens tonight. That's how we call it. Summer clock, winter, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> 
Um, it happens tonight, uh, to 2 a.m. in the morning of the 25th. Um, and then I'll close the gap and it will go back to my time, 4 p.m. Because right now I'm doing these streams at 3 p.m. Uh, our time. So it's a little more well lit, as you can see, even though today is super rainy. So maybe the storm will return. Uh, but in case, yeah, thank you so much for being here, Josephine. I will go over if you sent me questions on Instagram. We'll do that too. Don't worry. Thank you, there. No, no. Greetings from uh, Bergen, Norway, where spring just arrived. Cool. Here we're still in the fake winter period where it's like, no, I'm still here. The winter is kicking and screaming and hoping uh, that we don't forget it exists, but it kind of doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Vespa for Jen, how are you, my friend? Good morning from Granite Bay, California. Is that California, right? I keep forgetting. Uh, Liron, can you talk about the small uh, travel size sketchbook that has 100% cotton paper? Uh, yeah, I actually only have one of those, and that's, I mean, two, and that, that would be Michael Soloviev's. So it's it's actually a Daniel Smith paper, if I'm not mistaken. He's uh, Daniel Smith, um, uh, an Arsh paper. Um, Michael Soloviev is an ambassador for uh, Daniel Smith. Uh, don't remember if he's also an ambassador for, you can see it here, Daniel Smith brand ambassador. Michael Soloviev, he has an excellent YouTube channel. I recommend you check it out. Uh, great work. And these sketchbooks are, and this is where I did the... Um, Washtober challenge of 2019, I think. It's been a while. Uh, so the, the paper is really high quality. That's 100% cotton. But honestly, I don't know many. I don't think I know any brand that and there are a couple of really interesting works here. I don't think I know any other sketchbook that does that. And this, he sent it to me. I don't even know where you can buy these. Um, the only things I, I use aside from that is the Canson Montval. Uh, maybe Excel watercolor could work, but um, not enough sketchbooks do that. Uh, I think Arsh has their own sketchbooks, which is a good thing. So maybe maybe that kind of a thing would work. Uh, I don't know. What's your experience with that? Do you have any that you like? Vespa, let me know. Because um, I don't have any specific ones except for these. Um, yeah, Patricia, how are you doing? Uh, good morning from sunny New Hampshire. Cool. Very cool. Thank you, Juanita, for letting me know. Hey, Kate B, how are you doing? Thank you so much, my friend, for letting me know. Um, top three tips to paint loosely. Uh, that's a that's a video that uh, you know I have this kind of a video, by the way. I don't know if you just said it, but uh, three tips. I think it was three two tips for loose watercolor. Sharon, I actually have this video, so I can answer your question with a video. How to loosen up? Three tips for loose watercolors. And my uh, my camera skills are a little cringy. I'll have to forgive me for those because uh, it's been... Oh, this is actually here in this studio. I wasn't sure if it was in a different place. So this is loose. Three tips for loose painting watercolor. Um, so that's going to be that video. Now, hopefully you find it helpful. But if you want my thoughts on it, um, I do think a lot of it is just practicing the technique so much that you feel so comfortable with it and you can just, you know, go ahead and paint. Um, a lot of it is seeing big shapes. That's what I always talk about. If you're able to see the big shapes, you're much more likely to not um, be obsessed with small unnecessary details. And that's the biggest factor in painting loosely. Can you just put the, the line or shape there one go, you know, uh, if you want to keep things uh, fresh and not, you know, overworked, which is something we'll talk about soon, um, do wet and wet, do some lifting while it's still wet. Ruth is so cute. I have to show you. She's sleeping on the sofa. Let me show you. She's out. That's so funny. <laughs> Shalom. She knows we're talking about her. That's hilarious. She's like that when it's winter. She's like that. She gets all cozy. <laughs> She's such a good dog. Uh, yeah. Ellen. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, just for the tips. Yeah. Everything I said. I hope that helps. Uh, let me know if you struggled with anything in particular when it comes to painting loosely. And then I can give you more specific advice. Uh, hey, Ellen. How are you doing from rainy Cypress School? Yeah, it's rainy here too. We're probably in the same storm kind of system. Uh, Nancy, good morning from cloudy Akron, Ohio. Um, Big Yoshi, <laughs> hello, how, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Tom, hope everything is doing well. Yeah, definitely a happy Thursday. I've, I've worked so hard this week. 
have been working so hard. Uh, yesterday, I came close to my limit, so I really took it easier. Let me move this for a second. As I blow my nose. <laughs> so Sunday through, because Sunday is not a not like Saturday here. It's not a vacation day. Um, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I worked really hard. And then Wednesday, I was like, okay, I'm going to take it a bit easy. And now I'm really taking it easy. Uh, but I did get some important things done, so that's good. Uh, hope your week's been really well, Tom. Uh, Claire, morningly run, when do you not use a hairdryer? Any reason it would be a bad idea? So, you know, after I talked to Andy Evenson, and maybe you watched the interview here, I don't remember if it was the interview or off uh, video, he mentioned that he his colors dry nicely um, because he's not using a hairdryer. Uh, he mentioned that I think I also saw it in another interview because because I uh, because before I interviewed him I did some research I wanted to make sure I only ask the new stuff and punchy questions and build upon things that maybe I wish other people would ask who interviewed him before uh, and he mentioned that so he says that the drying looks better sometimes when you let it be now I don't know I haven't experienced it that much. I have a hunch that tells me he's right. Um, whether it's just the heat changes the color a bit, gives it an, a weird texture. Um, as for the science of it, I do wonder. It could be that using a hairdryer makes it harder to paint the next layers. From what I've seen in, uh, what's the name of the handprint, the very useful website on watercolor, uh, they explain how the paper, I think it was there, how the paper starts very, very you know, organized. The fibers and then once you paint it gets all messy and because it gets messy it's harder to paint the next washes now i do wonder if using a hairdryer alleviates that or makes that worse you know um one more thing i will say is if you're using a hairdryer do the do it from a distance it's better to go farther than closer um because you can move the paint too you can move it with the hairdryer and move wet areas back to dry areas um other than that, where you have to be careful, uh, not really. The The best thing I found is actually natural sunlight. So sometimes I do have natural sunlight here coming from the window, and then I'll make use of that. Or when I did a lot of plein airs in the past, I should do more soon. Um, that was really felt. The sun does the best job at drying. Uh, it's a very even way of drying. Everything dries very evenly, uh, very nicely. Uh, that would be the best if you have it actually. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing nothing against it if you're in a hurry. If you have time, you know, just let it be maybe. But sometimes the hairdryer actually helps me because I feel like the paint starts to dry unevenly. So I just need to dry everything fast. And then it can actually help lead to less undesirable cauliflowers, undesired cauliflowers. Uh, helmet family. How are you doing? How to earn as an artist? Should we become designer because it's a better, has better scope? You know, I'm all for um, doing a profession around art uh, because for most people, the reality is it's, it's going to be very hard to make to make a living as an artist, um, especially from just selling art. Uh, you need to do a lot of things right. Um, I'm thinking how I can tackle this from a bit of a different angle. You know, one of the things that's become apparent to me is success is not an accident, you know, and I see a lot of people say this. I started listening to, I don't know if anyone listens to Dave Ramsey. Uh, I started listening to his show and he said, like, you never, they never ask a football player after the game, like, uh, how did you, what did you do that helped you win? They never say, oh, I don't know, it was an accident. There's always careful planning behind it. Um, so I will say that if you want to earn a living as an artist, more than a lot of other fields, um, because you're, and I'll talk about why it's different from, let's say, the, uh, what do you call these? You know, the different, uh, I keep forgetting what you call these professions, um, like plumbing, electricity, and all of that. And, and even, you know, things that you work as an independent, maybe contractor, or maybe free, I don't know what you'd call that, but the road is more paved of course you need to build your clientele but the road is paved a little better because you know what you're doing this is the service i'm providing this is the type of people i'm providing the service to and you can look around and see a lot of different people who do the exact same thing 
right? And maybe the the area has effect on you know who your clients are and so on. Um, maybe you provide some subtle differences in service levels and service different things, right? But an artist is different from all of those because what you're doing is always carving your own path because an inherent part of art, I believe, is that discovery journey. And your art is, and that's what makes the unique value proposition immediately more distinct. Every artist has vastly different things to offer than if you compare, let's say, electricians, uh, which is why I think in art more than anything, it's even more important to have a very solid plan. Now, a plan is not, and that's something that I had a lot of trouble with when I got started. You know, you think about, you sit down, you write business goals and things you want to do and the things you want to achieve. But the, the thing is, a plan does not come out of the, the vacuum or ether. It doesn't, it isn't created in your head. A plan is created by research. That's what I discover, at least. Right now, I want to work on a new book. I can't make everything up. I actually go and look at other books and figure out the reviews and what people um, say about them. What are the things they didn't like about books? And I do this before every book I start to work on. What are the things people didn't like about the book so that I know that I can add that in? What are the things people did like so I can preserve that? And I bet you a big percent of authors don't do that. But that's very important. Now, who are the people who write the other books and how else are they making money? How do they promote their books? Do they have a YouTube channel? Do they do, uh, you know, in-store appearances? Do What do they do to promote their stuff? <clears throat> and so having a plan is not sitting down with a blank piece of paper. That's goal setting, maybe. Having a plan means you actually research. Who are the people that are your potential clients? Who do you want to be your potential client? Maybe based on the pricing. So let's say you want to sell a painting for, let's say you, you create oils, right? Let's take a practical example. You create oils. So the same size of a painting that for me it takes an hour or two hours to make, you take 10 hours to make, 20 hours to make. You have to price it differently. No way around it. So then you say, okay, so if it takes 10 times more, 20 times more, here's the price I need to make this sustainable. Now, it's your job to do the research and find the audience that is willing to pay that because they they want your product, they have enough money to spend on your product, et cetera, et cetera. You may discover that the clients aren't private people. It may be um, art advisors or gallery owners or you know it could be a business that you do a collaboration with because your art is just outpricing 99% of people you know, maybe 90% of people. So having a clear plan is paramount. And that plan is not created in a vacuum. It's something that you have to do research, right? So what you ask, back to your question, Helmet Family, should we become a designer? That's much more practical because then you can get hired. So I'm all for doing things that are practical. Maybe you're a designer, graphical designer, 3D, even 3D artist, concept artist. Get hired and do the thing you enjoy in a setting where... Um, you're getting paid properly and all of that, and then build your portfolio and everything else and independent business on the side, or maybe as a freelancer, you know, that's how I think it should be done uh, for most people, right? It's very rare. Um, it's just, I, I have to say it flat out, it's very rare the number of people who do what I do and succeed. It's just very, very rare. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot. Uh, and it's not necessarily because, you know, I personally or other people have this special gift. Um, I think it's a lot of circumstances, a lot of luck, but in a way of, you know, luck favors the prepared. Um, it's some luck, some hard work, some kind of maybe very small part of it is natural gifts, you know. Um, that's my take on it. I think if you believe you can do it, you probably can, but you have to be very practical, especially if it's arts. Again, uh, the trades, that's what I was uh, trying to say earlier, like uh, uh, plumbing, electricity, roofing, whatever, painting, the trades, right? That's how you call it, I believe. But in any case, that was a way too long of an answer. So sorry, I'm going to have to continue <laughs> to, to make sure I uh, catch on to the chat. That's a great question. Let me know if you have a follow up. I, actually, it's a topic I really enjoy talking about. Uh, so, yeah. James L. Baker, hey, Liron, can you talk about how to determine values in landscape planner? Yeah, I'll give you one really big tip that helped me. Uh, when you're outside doing planner, it's much harder 
than based on photos because the photo really shows you everything. So one thing I actually do that's very useful, take your phone or an iPad or whatever it is that you can have with you, take a picture of the view you want to paint. Then look at it black and white, preferably. And it's much easier because you see the borders because you took a picture. You see borders and you see the values more accurately. You can even place it against a tree or a street sign or whatever. Take a few steps back. <coughs> or maybe if it's your phone, don't leave it there. But, you know, just take a few steps away from the device and you will see the shapes much more clearly. And then use that as a reference in your imagination. You can leave the photo on your phone and kind of look at it as you paint, but uh, sometimes it's just hard. So look at the view, be one with the view. Planner is a great gift. It's just something amazing that, that we can experience, experience as artists. So, so I really want you to be uh, involved with the view that you're looking at, but use that as kind of a backup of, okay, I remember that the sky is light in this composition, the ground is fairly uh, fairly dark. So I have to make sure that I make a strong solid separation between the sky and the ground. These mountains in the distance, they go and they become a little um, a little uh, more and I'm gonna I just I just remember that I need to take a screenshot of, of the uh, questions that were sent to me. Oh now I can't find it great. Maybe I'll okay I'll answer them uh, on Instagram. If you ask me a question on Instagram I'll answer it on Instagram and I'm gonna write myself a note answer ig questions because i'll need to add them to a story highlight unfortunately because i messed up um so yeah uh, but in any case that's that's what i would say taking a photo and just looking at the values uh, can really help um because if you're just looking at the view and you don't have clear borders it's very hard i know some artists who walk around with an l frame thing they have two l kind of um what do you call it um I keep forgetting words, but they put them together and try to crop the scene in the best way possible. Today we have phones. We don't need to take physically something else. Uh, that's the biggest one. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of a curveball here as a second tip. Um, values are very malleable, especially when you work plein air. The more important thing is if you capture the essence of the place. So even colors, getting the colors right and then messing up on the values can have a lot of magic because it's plein air. So what I would say is try get the values relatively correct, relative to one another. So if you go this light on the sky, try to have the green hills a little darker like here, like this is the, the dark hills, this is the sky. But if you were to paint the sky, and let's, let's imagine this is a bar, highest is high as a lighter value. If you paint the sky lighter, make sure you also paint the hills lighter, right? If you paint them darker, make sure you paint the hills darker. Make sure that in relations to one another, the values work, even if they're not accurate, if you actually compare it to a picture you take, right? Because even the picture is inaccurate when you think about it. Um, but yeah, that would be my two cents. I hope that helps. And I hope to do more plein air soon where I can really talk about this more. Uh, hey, Chuck, how are you doing? Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you all? Hi, hey, Lirana, how is you, pal? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much. Tired from this week, but it's going to be a relatively chill weekend starting tomorrow. So I'm good. Um, <laughs> Ruth is out. It's so fun. She's so cute. Um, so yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's been really a good week. I want to show you work I did, but maybe later if we have time. I worked on a new manga kind of page, and I, I really want to show you. It turned out really nicely. Uh, Richard, how are you? Hello, everyone from sunny England. 24 degrees here. Nice. Uh, hey, Christina, how are you doing? Hope everything is super duper well. Uh, Ar Arlu? Arlu? Just beginning, so very basic question. Yeah, no worries. Liquid versus pen versus tube watercolor. Is there a difference or is it a personal preference? Thanks from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Cool. Uh, thank you so much for being here and no worries. Yeah, with, I'm, I like beginner questions probably the most. Um, so I'll say liquid I don't have much experience with. The one advantage is if I remember correctly, it allows you to mix a very large amount and keep it very bright, not light, but bright, keeping the colors, um, it's not even saturation, it's the brightness of the color, meaning it's, I can't even begin to explain brightness, but when you're blinded by it, no, it's not even that. I'll have to, I have a video on the topic, check it out, bright uh, value versus, man, I'm going to get in a side tangent, but in any case, brightness is how saturated you can keep the value while I think I have a good way of explaining it. How saturated you can keep the color while also having it light. So light color, light value, 
plus strong saturation equals brightness. That's basically it. So if you can have a very light red that is still very saturated, that's a good thing. So the thing with watercolor is the way you lighten a color is by adding water and that dilutes it and that hurts the saturation. So you end up with a process where the saturation is always decreased because you add water. So when you paint lightly, it's less saturated. That's not a problem that exists in other mediums where you can mix something using just colors without water at all. Um, but in any case, that's just off the tangent. Liquid, I think, is better for that, and it's better for mixing a large quantity, right? So you're talking about that doctor whatever thing. So you drip a few drips of water into of, of paint, very, very, um, what do you I keep forgetting words? Concentrated, very concentrated paint into a maybe water glass, and immediately it can get painted very fast, and you can use this entire quantity for big, vast washes. That's the advantage of liquid. Now, pen and tube is very similar, but here's the thing. Some paints dry very hard and are hard to reawaken. If you're using these kinds of paints, and it tends to be the earth, earthy pigments that do that more. If you use a lot of paints like this, I recommend using a tube because it dries less hard and you can just put a small quantity every time, use it up, put a new quantity next time, use it up, and so on. Tube can be very hard if it's a if it's a hard paint that, that you spray a lot of water on it. It takes ages to reawaken. Um, other than that, if you do want to do the thing I talked about with liquid, like mix a very large quantity of paint, tubes are going to be easier. You can actually just take... A bit of like a chunk of paint, mix it in a water cup, and you'll get a large quantity. Okay, I hope that makes sense. That's a very important question because when I got started, I had no idea what the difference was, even between pens and tubes. I was like, oh, which one should I choose? What's the difference? Uh, I'm using tubes. I like tubes better. It's more versatile, I feel like. Uh, hey, John. And by the way, just to remind everyone, if you can take a moment uh and drop a like on the stream as i blow my nose it's gonna help it reach more people and thank you so much for being here and i will have links i think in the description box through the watercolor realism the patreon critiques tier if you haven't checked that out uh, maybe you want to it's like the youtube video is only more structured and more in depth uh now back to <laughs> the chat and back to john let's get rid of this here oh Sorry, lost the message. Uh, here we go. Hi, Leron. Hi, everyone. Uh, already left a like. These Q&As are always great. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I really enjoy them. I did, it looks like they work. People are interested in, in just questions and just talk. And then you can watch this as you're doing something else. You don't have to focus on me painting stuff. Uh, and it's, very, it's much easier for me to film uh, than a painting process. Much less intense. Uh, so thank you so much for that, John. Uh, hey, Colleen. Hi from Hermosa, South Dakota. Thank you for being here. Where do you hail from? Where Where do you... I'm not sure what that means. But I'm based in Tel Aviv, Israel. I hope that answers the question, Claire. Uh, VD, hello. How should I practice after ma mastering cube and cylinder? Um, so if you really mastered it... Uh, which is easy to think you have and you haven't, but uh, if you if you have indeed mastered it, the next step would be uh, mannequinization. That's what it's called. It's a bit of a complex thing, but um, it depends on what you want to draw, basically. If you want to draw people, you would start maybe learning very basic anatomy. And then you'll learn that the head has a shape of an egg and you'll learn how to create it with your knowledge of cube and cylinder, cubes and cylinders. Uh, if you want to draw you know views or cityscapes or stuff like that practice drawing buildings with the principles you learned right practice um, um applying what you learn to the subject that interests you now there is one more thing there's actually a great video i've seen i'm gonna send it over in the chat because if i can find it advanced uh cube uh, advanced 3d practice what was it called where someone shows I forgot his name too, but he's really good. Um, let's see if I can find it. Drawing clothes uh, tutorial. I think I've seen another video by the same artist on... Oh, I think it's Ross. I think it, it's Ross Draws, maybe. Um, or, yeah, Ross Draws. So let me see if I can find it. Ross Draws um, 3D 
cubes. It, it auto completes the Ross Ross controversy, which I have no idea what it is. Oh, it's not him. Darn it. It's someone else. There is there was this video showing huh, showing like advanced concepts on who is who did I see that does that? Wait, let me see. I have to find it now. Cubes. It's not this, it's not this guy, it's someone else. But I really need to find this video for you because it's really, really good. Um he's usually oh modern day James. Darn it. Yes. Modern day James. You're probably familiar with him. Cubes. So I'm gonna find um tilting forms, twisting planes. Yes, found it. So this guy is the best. He's so good. So let me show you. Because I have just the right answer for you. Um this video is so good. So if you did master cubes and cylinders and stuff like that, he's showing how to manipulate shapes. Um, modern day James on advanced. So there we go. This is probably the best video that I've seen that's a next step. Um, if you don't want to jump straight into uh, drawing people and buildings and stuff, which is very hard, you can use that as a next step. So that's where you take, let's say, a cube and you learn how to twist it, like literally twist the, the different parts of it to make it skewed. Or you play around with the contour lines. You can do a lot of cool things with that and it will really help you with drawing more complex uh, perspective, three-dimensional shapes, um, cubes, and so on. I hope that helps. Um, Katie Felgar, how are you doing? Hey. One, two, three, rock fan. What animal do you think is the easiest to paint uh, in watercolor for beginners? Um, there's probably a lot of them because it depends more on how you paint them. But birds, I find, are very accessible because you can let the color mix very nicely. Fish as well. Uh, anything where the color doesn't matter as much and you can kind of let it mix freely is really good. Let me tell you what's a really bad one to start with. Anything with white fur can be very hard, uh, especially if you don't know how to choose good photos. You'll end up trying to paint every every little hair of the fur and really having a hard time mixing the right kind of temperature. And instead of exaggerating and making it more interesting, you'll just struggle mixing it and it can end up very boring. And, and so, yeah, that would be something not as ideal. Uh, but the best would be, in my experience, birds, fish, which are all also relatively easy to draw. That's where I would start. Hope that helps. Uh, hey, Charlie. Good morning from Austin, Texas. Uh, I got you. One, two, three, rock fan. Uh, Christina Ruggieri. If you could use three watercolor colors for the rest of your life, what would they be? Um, yeah, that's hard because I, I don't know if I should choose Thalo. I'll probably choose Thalo Blue. Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Rose, and Lemon Yellow. I can't believe I say this, but Lemon Yellow will allow me to mix more stuff. So <laughs> unfortunately, it's going to be a combination. The printer combination, so to speak. The cyan magenta yellow. Um, just very, I'm so practical. I'm like, yeah, I'll just use these and, and hope for the best. Uh, Jill, hi from cloudy Colombia. Um, what's MD? I don't know. MD state. Now I have to find Maryland. Okay, cool. Uh, hi from cloudy uh, Columbia, Maryland. We went on. Oh yeah, DST last Sunday. I enjoy your uh, live Q and A. It's a cool, cool. So we're going now. So, uh, that's gonna be nice. Finally, it, it's gonna it's gonna widen the hour gap. I'm gonna make it seven instead of six for us in Eastern. Uh, but yeah, I wonder what's better. I'm not sure. Uh, Paula Campbell. Good morning from Yorktown, Virginia. Thank you so much for being here, Paula. Really appreciate you. Patricia, lots of great comments about your cows in pasture tutorial. Everyone loves uh, your background and said you you were brave to go for it live. Yeah, that was a fun one. Um, and I kind of went, again, rolled with the punches, as I like to say. Um, it's, watercolor is such a surprise. You know, in a way, I think a first painting of every scene in watercolor should be just that. A first painting should be observed that to some, to some level should be observed that as just practice for a more finished piece if you'd be interested in that because there's so many um variables that are in your control but kind of aren't that make it very hard to get the exact result you want so that's just a good way to um i guess build up towards something more final so whenever i paint something for you at a video and it's the first time i painted it 
I should probably treat it as like experimentation, you know. So it could be interesting to paint a scene I'm familiar with, because then I'll probably be able to teach it better, which I don't think I ever, maybe I did once or twice. Um, Abdallah Osgulen. Hello, Liron. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, Any poly 18. Hey, from Greece. My question for you. Um, are you also into digital painting? Yeah, so it's funny that you asked. So this is a good timing. Maybe I'll show you. Uh, what I created, because I will work on it digitally. Uh, so all I have to do is create a smaller file size so that I don't break my uh, internet. So that's going to be uh, and take me about 20 seconds. Um, image size, let's reduce it to uh, 300 dpi, 2000 on the higher. There we go. That should be good. Uh, and let me upload it here. Uh, overlay, add overlay. Oh, I should probably uh, do something like this. Wait, image, canvas size. If you give me one second, I'll solve it. Uh, width is going to be 24, maybe. Good. Convert. Uh, so just to answer your question very briefly, and then I'll give a better answer. I don't work digitally much. The times I have tried working digitally, I had a great time. I really enjoy them. Uh, exports, say for web legacy. I really enjoy the works that I did do digitally. I find that it gives you much more freedom um, in a way. And uh, you can just pick the color you want to use. You know, it's it's a little easier. I do think there is some magic to the mechanics of working with a physical uh, medium, uh, but it could be a great study tool, right? If you're if you're trying to, um, where is it? I just saved a file and it disappeared on me. Gee, thanks, thanks Photoshop. Uh, where did I put? I put it in the desktop. I just. Saved it in the desktop just this second. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna file go recent recents. Where, where is the darn file? Um, huh, just disappeared on me. That's very rude. Okay, wait, let me do it again. Sorry, uh, it should have already been on the screen now. So annoying. Image canvas size 24. My computer sometimes I, I have no idea what's going on um so i want to show you i basically decided that i need to i really want to work more on my manga style export save for web save oh i put it in downloads great i had a feeling something weird like that happened okay there we go so this is something i worked on it's going to show up in just a second um Worked on the last two days or so. There we go. Of course, it won't move all the way to the side. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to just for one second make your message disappear. Uh, so it's a page. It's a manga page. So here's, here's the thing. I started working on um, on my projects that, that, that I talked about, that I shared with you, with the Blacksmith Apprentice. But that, even though it's a short story and I wrote the entire thing, it's going to be like at least 100 pages. So I just felt like doing something a little more um, immediate. So I decided to write a three-page story that has no predefined, uh, that has no real beginning or an end. It's just this story doesn't exist. There is no rest. I didn't write the rest of it. It's just this and then two more pages because I just want to feel like I, I took a project to completion. So as to your question about me using digital mediums or digital, you know, painting, I will use digital tools to add to this. I'll add uh, tones. I'll add gray gray colors to it. It's going to be gray probably. Maybe colorful. Why not? But <clears throat> it's meant to be gray for now. But I may use digital, digitally, um, uh, digital tools to paint it, this specific thing. Uh, and, and I'm very proud of this panel on the bottom left. I can't believe I pulled that off. That angle is so darn hard. Uh, so yeah, that was fun. Just wanted to share with you. Uh, I can show you the physical thing. I have it here uh, right next to me. Uh, but I don't do much, and I should do more. Uh, the times I did try it was really, really fun, uh, honestly. Uh, 
Christina, I'm really glad I joined your Patreon. The monthly one-on-one -on -one has been a game changer. Thank you so much. Yeah, and Christina keeps telling me that I need to push it more. So there you go. If you want to, I have a new Patreon tier. It's called the Critiques tier, where basically once a month we do a 30-minute video call. It can be audio only. I don't care. Whatever you prefer. But uh, basically, we can go over as many paintings uh, as you as we can cram into the time frame, uh, and I'll give you my feedback on them and like exactly what I think you should do to take your work to the next level. And it can be as personalized as as possible because it's one on one, um, and it's not going to be do this, do that. But it's going to be more like consider these things because I do. The top priority I have is to encourage you to find your own thing. And it's very dangerous to be swayed by other people's advice. So I try to balance my advice with like evergreen stuff that will always be relevant if something in the style really shouts at me that needs to work on, that you need to work on in terms of technique or something like that. Um, I will mention that. But also beyond that, like if I see maybe a, a talent that you have or something, something special you may want to work more on because you're so good at it it will give you an edge artistically um that's the opportunity to do that so be sure to check it out the link should be in the description box and in fact i'm going to confirm that just to make sure that i don't send you to somewhere where there's no link uh, so i look at the description of the video and uh yeah it's the last link under the it's a bit it's a bit awkward while it's live streaming but you should find it um oh i actually don't have it here that's weird but in any case, it's just patreon.com forward slash Leron Uh That's so strange. I was sure I put it in. Uh, but I'm going to drop it in the chat. Patreon. Patreon link. Um, because when I schedule the live streams through StreamYard, sometimes sometimes weird things happen with the video's description and details. But it's there now. Uh, thank you so much, Christina, for the recommendations. Uh, I really appreciate you helping me to market myself. That's really, it's really useful. I, I did a lot of changes thanks to what you suggested. Um, Katie Felger, good morning. Do you have a favorite watercolor brand? Um, not really. It's very hard to tell, like, you know, favorite brand. There are so many good ones. Um, the one I end up using the most is Daniel Smith, honestly. Um, so that would be considered maybe my favorite. But there are so many other good brands, you know. I have a bunch of videos on those. Uh, I should do an updated one of like all the brands I like using, and then people can decide for themselves. Um, Barbara, uh, hello from Calgary. Thank you for being here. Tom, the Etcher Perfect sketchbook is 100% cotton. Good, good. Thank you for the, that. That's a great answer to the question. I wasn't familiar enough with it. 100% uh, cotton, A4 and A5, and people seem to like them. Never tried them personally. You know what? Etcher actually contacted me, and um, they wanted me to review, I think, a sketchbook. And I'm pretty darn sure I gave them the address, but uh, it never arrived. I think there was a problem with shipping, and I think maybe it was right before COVID, so probably not their fault, but uh, I never got to try it, unfortunately. Um, Never tried them because of the price. So are they, are they pricey? I guess if it's 100%, then yeah. Uh, the Argnano Etcher sketchbooks, 100% cotton. Just bought one, have not used yet. Good, good. So people are familiar with it. Uh, Kate B, do you ever enjoy doing fantasy art? Dragons, fairies, etc. Uh, so yeah, first off, what I just showed you, the manga page, that is more, it's not, it's more like a futuristic kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that the actual manga I was planning on working on with the blacksmith and all, it's it is a fantasy genre. It's it's not going to be painting as much as drawing, um, but it is that genre. Well, it's not even fantasy. It's more like historical drama thing. But but yeah, I definitely enjoy it. I did a couple of berserk studies. That was great fun. Uh, monsters stuff like that. I definitely enjoy doing that kind of a thing. I don't do enough of it. I should. Um, but yeah, maybe in a future manga comic, we'll see. <laughs> Arlo likes Ruth, I think. Hey, everyone says Ruth says hi to Ruth. She's with her nose in the sofa. It's so funny. Take a look. <laughs> Looks like a, a little cow. Uh, <laughs> uh, Paula says Ruth is so cute. What kind of a dog uh, is she? So funny that you ask. I can actually tell you because we did a DNA test. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. um, well, let's see. 
where will I find it? There we go. Okay, I found it. So, <laughs> are you ready? So, she is about 50% French Bulldog, about 3% Japanese Spitz, 2.5% Chihuahua, 1.3% Brever, 13% uh, Parson Russell Terrier, 12% Belgian Malinois Shepherd, 8% Mixed Breed Unknown, like 5% Doberman, 5% French Bulldog on the other parent side, and 4% Prague Prague Retter. So there you go. You got the breakdown. We were actually so curious that we did her did the genetic tests. Um, and, you know, we wanted to, maybe for the future, it helps to know of any possible health things. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. She's like 45, I believe she, she's like 45% French Bulldog on one side, and then another five on the other side. So 50 in total. That would be the most. And definitely can tell by the way she, by the noises she makes. She can talk like Frenchies do sometimes. Uh, Aaron, uh, hey, how are you doing? Uh, Mark, how are you doing? Uh, which student grade paint is best? A lot of people say Van Gogh. A lot of people like Van Gogh. Some people like the Venice um, line. Uh, which one would I recommend? I use mostly Cotman, but I don't like them as much. Um, so I would say Van Gogh is probably one of the more surefire kind of bets, I guess. A lot of people like them. Uh, one thing I would say, beware with Van Gogh. I love that they're very saturated, very easily. That's a big problem with uh, uh, student grade paint. Um, but and there we go, the sun disappeared. Um, so I like that they're very saturated. My one problem with them is the, um, the fact that they dry a little differently. Sometimes the way they look when they're wet is not a perfect indication of what they're going to look like when they're uh, dry. And that's my personal kind of issue with them sometimes. But they are pretty good. I use them a lot. Uh, <laughs> everyone loves Ruth. Uh, Nikki says, hi, Leron. It's Nikki from Canada. Thank you for being here. How are you doing? Uh, Phoenix, lots of people say hair dryer burns and dulls the pigment. Yep, yep. I heard that too. Tom, hair dryer stuff. Isn't it the special that uh, isn't it that it affects how the pigment is absorbed by paper as you evaporate? Yeah, exactly. That's my that's my kind of thing. I'm wondering. Cotton all, also shrinks with heat. Yep, yep. Unless I do a demo where I I'm in a hurry or I have to film, I try to at least let it dry seventy percent, no hair dryer, and then do the rest. Um, it's about if you're using masking. Yeah, it would loosen up masking fluid. And I should say it will loosen up masking tape too. So when you tape your paper, if it's not a, that good of a masking tape, it will loosen up. And with big paintings, it becomes a bigger problem, actually. Heat hardens paper fibers. Oh, it's actually a rhyme. Nice. Heat hardens paper fibers. <laughs> um, let's see. Success is earned may also be survivorship bias. Yeah, that's a good. That's an interesting question. Oh, and thank you so much for letting me know about the trades. That's an interesting thing. Success is earned may also be a survivorship. So, so when you say that, do you mean that some people just flat out don't have the ability to achieve something? Thus, even if they work hard, they're not going to succeed. But just some people do. I'm curious to hear. That's an interesting discussion. I'm. I don't have a. A dog in the fight, you know, I don't, because I don't think dogs should be allowed to fight, but I, I really don't, uh, I don't know, I have no idea, you know. Um, Josephine, can, why identifying them, cool red, yellow, warm blues, why it would matter, same question about um, opaque or transparent paints, identifying why I'd want one more than i'm not sure i'm not sure i understood the question if you can um if you can rephrase it identifying them uh warm cool red yellow warm blues white would matter i'm not sure let me know sorry um identifying why i'd want more than huh so if you're generally about opaque and transparent colors I just use the colors that I like based on the hue, if I like the color itself, um, with some disregard, some unhealthy too, disregard for the opacity, which sometimes leads to undesired effects because I'm not a master of like understanding, okay, if I paint with opaque over transparent or transparent over opaque, I actually have a lot to improve in my understanding of that. 
which is why if you want to keep it simple, maybe it's best to just use transparent if it's watercolor and use opaque more for the, you know, highlights and final details. Uh, but yeah, not sure. But let me know about that first part. Uh, Elani Fly. Hey, Liron, can you give any advice to someone who wants to get back to drawing but forgot everything and now starting from the very beginning? Sorry for my English. Yeah, so here's the thing. Some people are bummed out that they maybe took a break and they feel rusty or out of, you know, uh, out of their element. I say look at it as an opportunity to relearn things correctly. It's almost like you, some things, you know, you, you never really forget. And, and I would argue maybe it's like riding a bicycle with drawing as well. Maybe you didn't forget what you learned, um, but you just need to reawaken it. I'll give you a great example. When I traveled South America, um, multiple countries, when we just got there, um, my Spanish was kind of weak, of course. But then after a month of spending time there, my Spanish went from zero to like four or five. Five isn't, it's not crazy, but it's pretty good. Um, and the reason why is that uh, telenovelas here were very popular when I was growing up and we used to watch them, which is very popular for kids, uh, like uh, Chiquititas. I don't know what you call these, that in English, but um, so I had a lot of hidden Spanish knowledge in my brain and it took it a while to just be set free and to remember that I knew it. Um, so maybe it's the same with drawing. Now, I say use this as an opportunity to learn things the right way, which means you start with the very basics, how you hold a pencil and how you're able to draw straight lines, right? So the way I do my warm-ups, check out how I do. I have a couple of videos on the topic. I like to draw a lot of dots and then work on connecting them, connecting them accurately in one go, right? Not hairs. Don't draw hairs like this and just one go, one go, one go. It really teaches you to um, be succinct with your lines and be able to tell a better story uh, and then start working towards, you know, curved lines, try and do circles that are accurate. It's not easy, but you will get it eventually paint from the draw from the shoulder. Right. And then slowly build up on that. Then start introducing perspective, start um, uh, messing, uh, messing around with boxes and cylinders and spheres, which are very hard. Spheres are very challenging. And that way you can slowly build it up. Right. Um, use this as an opportunity to start from the basics. Again, I always recommend Stan Prokopenko. Proko, uh, his YouTube channel is the best for that. Um, I do drawing too, but he's just drawing. You know, more he's more focused on that. So that would be the best place I think to begin. Uh, but yeah, see it as an opportunity. It's a great time to start the right way and even have a leg up because you did um, you did do it in the past right so yeah <clears throat> josephine oops that got away from me colors warm blues yeah sorry I'm, I'm i'm way behind on the chat but we'll have i'll wait and see uh juanita says eric rhodes of planner magazine has a book to help artists sell and market yeah um i did not uh read that book i'm familiar with eric rhodes uh let me give everyone here a better advice than reading eric's book uh, even though it may be a great book. Um, I just read so many books that <clears throat> I could find all the information for free. Better information. Because let me tell you this. The real magic, let's say you want to succeed on YouTube, right? Most books you'll find on, let's say, how to succeed in social media or how to succeed as an artist. They will mention YouTube is a great tool to put yourself out there, right? Social media, which forget about like in the past people, this social media, they said no one will use it. And, you know, the internet is a fad and all of that. But Forget about that even. If someone says YouTube is a great tool to build an audience, I built an audience of whatever, a million viewers, that still doesn't tell you how to do that, right? So yes, you discovered something, you rediscovered something that you knew. Because if I were to ask you, do you think social media is effective for <laughs> building an audience? You probably would say yes. So most of these books, I read too many books that, that say they'll teach you something and then it's very shallow. But if you go on YouTube, and you search for how to build a successful YouTube channel, you'll find a bazillion results. And some of them will be 2022, like specific to 2022 or 2021. You'll find much newer content, right? Where books help is with the mindset. But even that you can find for free. And I say this is the same about my courses. They're more structured. They go more in depth. But you can find like 90% for free. So... Instead of reading Eric's book, look at what Eric does 
and do the same. That's something I learned from Gary Vee, and it's super useful. If you want to be as successful as someone else, don't listen to what they say. Look at what they do. Now, what does Eric do? Eric interviews tons of really uh, successful and famous and loved artists, right? He's one of the only people who interview Joseph Bookfish, Alvaro Castaneda, all of these people. And I don't think that's because these people are snobs and wouldn't, I'm sure if other people would reach out, they would do it too. But Eric is one of the people who reach out to them. Now, Eric has uh, a platform, right? He has the podcast, he has the magazine as well. So my YouTube channel is an equivalent to Eric's magazine because the magazine, the Planner magazine, is a publication. My YouTube channel is also a publication. His publication publication deals with plan air painting. My channel deals with just watercolor, you know? So don't listen necessarily to what he says. And it's not because he's a bad person or anything, right? I love his his work is great because I, I learned so much from his interviews and, and the magazine is great too. Um, but just because people often create information based on the things they believe, even if it's sometimes they do things differently. They may recommend things that they themselves don't do, but why not just look at what makes him successful and follow that, right? So what can we learn from Eric? Um, connections, building connection with, connections with other artists, providing them a platform, right? Having a podcast, building an audience around that, having content, right? You can learn so much from him. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure where he is at with actually painting himself. Like, I'm sure he does, but I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with his work as an artist, um, but that's something maybe to look at, right? Um, and again, this art thing, this is like, just like the, the trades, it's it's very different because you carve your own path. So no one's going to have the exact same path as Eric, right? Uh, but I do want to kind of um, give a disclaimer. Again, I didn't read his book and maybe it's great. Maybe it's a wonderful book. I personally have not read almost any books that truly answered my question of how to sell more and how to market more. All of the information I found was from YouTube, so just saying. Uh, but yeah, his his may be different. I'm actually curious. Let me open it up. Eric Rhodes' book. Um, let's see. I do like a live thing. Um, make more money selling your art. I think that's the one, right? Make more money selling your art. Proven techniques sounds good for turning. Your, oh, that's a DVD or is it a book? I don't know. Um, proven techniques for turning your passion into profit. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to read it to really know if it's uh, worth it. But of course, I have no reason to believe it's not. I mean, most of his stuff is good. Kindle. Oh, it's actually free on Kindle. That's cool. So I can just read it. Let me go ahead and open it up. <laughs> um, Nope, I want to skip that thing which you are now offering me. Oh, it's free just for um, for the Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. Well, I don't want that. Can I just buy it? Oh, okay, it's nine ninety nine to buy. Okay, I'll I'll take a look at it. Maybe I have it even. I'm not sure. Um. Now I'm curious. Positioning and promotion and mere talent. Yeah. Okay, the difference between mediocrity and making millions in the field of art is more marketing, positioning, and promotion than mere talent. Yep, I definitely agree with that. Um, it'll be interesting. Maybe I'll get it and read it properly. But in any case, yeah, just to let you know, I think all the information is out there for free. So we, it's kind of a funny time we live in where you don't really need to buy too much. Uh, but yeah, that was a huge tension. Sorry about that. Um, good. I see some problems solved in the chat. That's good. Uh, Big Yoshi, I've been doing watercolor for a year now and I'm using student grade supplies. What would be a good time to upgrade? If you've been doing it for a year, I think you're, you, you can do it now. Do you feel, um, do you feel like the paints are inferior in a way? Do you feel like, um, you're not able to achieve the effect you're after? If that's the case, Definitely try and move into better stuff and just buy like three tubes, maybe, um, which you can do a lot with blue, red, and yellow. Um, but if not, you know, you can just stick to what you're using. Uh, there isn't really a reason to move unless something hinders your progress, you know. Um, <laughs> people communicate with Ruth Phoenix. I forgot the name, but there is an Apple app that simplifies the image into only four levels of value contrast, 
to help you see the value easier. Yep, yep. There are a couple of apps like this, and Photoshop does that too. Uh, Patricia, I'm a photographer also and always crop my compositions uh, with my phone, uh, even size to my canvas. Cool. That's really neat. If you can already get the ratio width to, uh, not width, height to height to width, that's good. Uh, viewfinder. Yeah, I guess that's the app. Digital Viewfinder. Hey, Daiji, how are you doing? Hello, hello. I'm starting work. Love the QAs as always. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for everyone who's here. I really appreciate it. A nice, solid uh viewership today uh hey laura how are you doing good morning to you too uh real life is too flat <laughs> i'm not sure the liquids tend not to be light safe i mean light fast which is an issue if you're trying to make artwork that isn't fugitive had no idea that's good to know but i think dr what's his name dr ph i think those should be light fast right i'm pretty sure they are Luis, saludos the, the Panama. Cool. Never got to visit Panama. Uh, Richard. Okay, that's conversations. Let's skip. <laughs> uh, Brock. Uh, how much do you think a beginner acrylic painting would go for dollars? It's a 8 by 10 inch. Yeah, I'm really not familiar with the acrylic scene. Um, huh. I don't know. I'll have to... I don't even know if seeing the painting would help me. It's... Very hard to decide. The answer is probably as much as the artist is, is willing to ask for, and then as much as the market is willing to pay for. You know, prices are at the end of the day kind of directed by the market. Um, but send me an email if you want me to take a look. If it's your work or someone else's, and you just wonder how much it would go for. Why don't I have a good answer for you? Just go over to some galleries of artists. That's what I did. And look at how much they sell their works for. Um, you have uh, Leon Holmes. Uh, Leon Holmes, right? Leon Holmes. Um, for example, who sells, I think it's mostly oils, right? Um, so you can see how much he charges for his paintings, which are really beautiful, by the way. Um, so that's what I would do. That's how I, I would uh, generally get an idea for these things. It's market research, right? You can't come to these conclusions just made up in vacuum. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not as familiar with acrylics. I, it's a bit hard for me to say. And some acrylics can be very fast to create, so not sure. John, is it an important part of the creating process to share your art with others, or is it okay just to paint for yourself? Um, I think it's not an important part, honestly. I think it's it's more than okay to paint just for yourself. Um, I'll, I'll play a little devil's advocate and say that, let's say you're so good you're as good as the top people in the in the watercolor oil whatever sphere and you just paint for yourself no one sees it only you enjoy it perfectly okay very badass actually i think if you're that good but you share your work with no one it's it's funny in a in a in a cool way i guess uh yeah perfectly okay i don't think it's necessary for improvement or anything like that too if you are um if you have enough critical thinking skills you don't have to get feedback to improve in, in art. That's what I think, at least. I'll have to, you know, I'll have to think about that last statement. I think, I think it's correct for me, in my opinion. I think it represents my opinion, but I'm not sure. Uh, Phoenix, totally okay to paint. Just, yeah, definitely. I, that's what I think. Victor, greetings from Switzerland. Can you make a copy of your creations, assuming you want the result to be transferred on good aquarel quality paper with some pumps and uneven surface on it. Printer. Hmm. So I'm not sure what you mean by copy. Do you want to print something on an actual paper, watercolor paper? Do you want to create something and then print it on watercolor paper? I mean, that could that sounds really interesting. I think. Some places should be able to do that too, like printer shops. But I don't know. That's interesting. Not sure. Um, let me know what you mean exactly, Victor. I'll try and answer better. Uh, Progo has tons of advanced drawing techniques also are for you. To be, yeah. And also not advanced. Also beginner. Um, don't, go to, don't go straight to the advanced. I go to the advanced and I still get lost. Uh, stick to the beginner stuff if you can. Hopefully, I've given that link. 
Phoenix, if you can get a 300 DPI image, Gishli uh, are possible. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. I know about Gishli prints. That's how you pronounce it, right? Uh, but yeah, not, not my expertise, unfortunately. Diego in Japan, do you have favorite non-traditional watercolor artists? I mean, people who don't just paint things like buildings, lakes, fruit and trees. Do you have favorite non-traditional watercolor artists? Hmm. I don't know. I just... Do you mean... So I think not non-traditional, but non-representational, maybe? Do you mean abstract artists or just kind of modern artists? Um, if you mean modern... And I don't know, like, watercolor is kind of... Most people paint that way. So let's say if it's not watercolor, I do have quite a few of these. Um, especially as I got into NFTs, I found a lot of cool artists. Uh, that I really, really like. But you know what? I do have an answer for that. Uh, I don't remember her IG handle, but there is someone who does exactly that. So it's watercolor. It's a combination of watercolor and other things. Uh, but she works. Let me see if I can find it because I, I don't remember because it's not my niche. So I don't dive too deep on, but I do think I, I saved a few of her posts. Little Thunder, I think. Little Thunder. Little th Yeah, I remember it. Okay, let me show you. I don't know if that answers your the category you're asking about, but this this is a little thunder. Let me show you like a really cool process by her. Wait a second. So it's watercolor. Let me shut that off so we don't get copyright claim. Um, okay. Okay, I have to show you. This is really beautiful. I know it's like the worst way of showing things, but. Wait, let me try. Can I go full screen? There we go. Better. Oh, that's going to be a good one. So you see, that's water. And sorry if you're just listening. A uh, little thunder on Instagram. Uh, that's, I guess, non-traditional. And she's incredible. It's like the perfect combination of kind of an Eastern manga style and, I don't know, other things that I don't even know how to define. Look at that. That color combination. Oh, nice. <laughs> so my Delhi app. Wait just a second. Let me see here. I hate that it's so hard to rewind stuff, but let me show you. Okay. This is the color combination I wanted you to see. See this? This is so cool. So the answer is yes, I do, I do have that. Uh, but yeah, great, great artist, Little Thunder on Instagram. Um, and I probably can think of more if I really try. Uh, so yeah, the answer is yes, apparently. Uh, Michelle and Tara, hello, my first time in here. I'm in Somerset, UK. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if the, uh, let me check just, I'm gonna check it myself just to see that the audio is not uh, messed up because I really smack the mic right now by mistake very good yeah Let's see here i think we're good <laughs> yeah okay we're good sorry about that so welcome aboard, uh, Michelle Ann. I really appreciate you being here. And it's funny, I feel like a lot of people have discovered this channel recently, probably thanks to that video that got a lot of views. Uh, Vespa for Jen, what are good resource sites for free reference images? So I like Pixabay a lot. I'm still, I haven't forgotten that I said I will create one. Um, it's in the work plan for this year, but I don't know when. That I'll create a web page with tons of references in different, you know, uh, divided into different subjects. I tried accessing the wet canvas uh, photo library and it just doesn't doesn't work anymore. Um, I don't know why. Oh, now it works. So I guess it was a temporary thing. This is a really good resource. I'm going to put it in the... This is a really, really good resource, but my go-to is just Pixabay. Pixabay.com. Pixabay.com. That's my go-to. There's also Pexels, I think. Pexels. Is also good, uh, but yeah. And the best resource is to take your own pictures, of course. 
Uh, Marjorie, upstate New York, finally here. Thank you for being here. Crystal Martin, Art, how do you move away from doing classes to your own work? Uh, when do you know you're ready and what's the best way to start? That's a great question and it's a very wise question because at some point you have to move away from it. Now, I would generally answer that the earliest you can. So <clears throat> as soon as you get the bug and you want to paint something of your own, go for it. Just do it. It's going to be messy. It's going to be inferior to when you're following someone else's class, but that's good. That's necessary growth pains. Um, so you have to go through that. Uh, that's what I think in my experience, a lot of people don't, don't graduate from classes. You have to, at some point, make your own art, make it your own, build your own style. Um, I would say if you feel comfortable with the basic technique, it's time to move on and, and do that. Now, I will say one more thing. Why do I say as soon as possible? Because you can always go back, right? So as soon as you feel like you can do it, try and paint your own view, preferably a picture you took, because that um, that would be something maybe you have more connection to. And then go back and do some classes and processes from YouTube, you know? So my answer would be as soon as you feel like you can do that and give it a try. And don't worry if it looks like crap, because when you get started, it will. And it's going to be weird. You're like, oh, but I get good results when I follow someone else's teaching. That's how it works. That's how it works. Trust the process. And just like you improved your ability to follow someone's instructions, you'll improve your ability to paint your own kind of a thing. Uh, Ellen, do you ever have periods of not wanting to paint? I have not touched a brush for two weeks now. I don't know why. I have periods of not wanting to do other things. Um, other things that could be considered fun and I don't want to do. So I know what you mean. It doesn't meet me in painting. It meet, meets me in other things. And I have spoken to John about this on Discord because um, he asked me how I was doing. Um, I have these time, these periods where I don't feel like doing anything work-related. I haven't felt like I don't feel like doing anything. It's been a long time since I felt, let's say, completely depressed and not wanting to do anything i'll always enjoy you know playing the nintendo switch or um even drawing and painting for that matter I, i'll always enjoy it or looking at my pokemon cards or watching something that i like or spending time with people i uh, i like i always can like to do that i can can be in the mood for that but one thing that does happen is i don't feel like doing anything work related that can happen. And seeing as my work is also my passion and hobby, that can be frustrating. So I don't feel like, maybe I don't feel like painting, but that's not usually it. I don't feel like filming a video. I don't feel like drawing. Like the manga pages, I have huge resistance. Every time it's a new page, it's a new dread of like, will I be able to draw this thing? Because it's inventing a lot, a lot of invention, a lot of things that you just don't have a reference for. You have to start by inventing and then filling in the blanks. So I definitely have that not for painting, but for other things. Um, it could be kind of avoidance or withdrawal from it. There's actually a thing called withdrawal personality. I don't, I don't know if it's that, but I have this terrible, I think it's a frostbite. Now it's much better, but it was really, really bad. So I was looking at it. Um, I think there is a term for that, like when you avoid something. Um, so yeah, it's so weird, you know, it meets, I guess, different people in different places. I don't have that for watercolor at all. I can always take out a brush and paint. I, I know that's not, that's not like a, an answer that many people will give, but I don't think I ever felt lack of motivation to, I, and I don't hear many people say that. I can always pick up a brush and do something with it, even if it's a small sketch, even if it's like a, a, sh a few shapes that create something. I can always have the desire to do that. Um, but other things can be like that, for sure. Uh, I know what you mean. And I think one of the best things to do is also not to judge yourself too harshly for it, because sometimes that act of self-judgment depends on your personality, but sometimes that act of self-judgment ends up being much more detrimental. Whereas if you just let it go and enjoy and, enjoy, and understand that it's a phase it will go away. You just are able to let it go. That's what I find from my experience. You know, I like that analogy of <laughs> Ruth just stretched. I love that analogy of um, emotions are like a river and it's flowing. And you don't know what you'll get in the flow, right? It's just water and there are all sorts of streams of water in it. And some emotions are negative and some emotions are positive. But if you just 
stay there in the river and stand up and stay in the river, the bed will 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 go, will eventually pass, right? Because it keeps flowing all the time. So actually, the answer is letting go. Now, the good emotions will also pass, and I think it's very important to understand that as well, because and that allows you to better appreciate and enjoy them. So if you have time of great inspiration, which I have from time to time, again, I can always paint, but whether I feel like really in the moment and really inspired is a different question, right? Sometimes, sometimes I'll feel that and sometimes I won't. Uh, but even when I don't, I feel great painting, but it's just there's a level above that. Even that passes. And by recognizing that that passes as well, you're setting yourself up for success because you know to better appreciate the good because you know it's also temporary. So I hope that gives you something to think about. Um, but I definitely get it. I feel it. Everyone feels it. One area of life or, or another, uh, very natural. And I will say two weeks is not a not too bad. I don't think it's that bad. If you would say a couple of months, I would say, okay, yeah, you maybe you're avoiding it or maybe you're not making enough time or making it a priority. But the two weeks, I mean, that's just life. That's life gets in the way. Uh, Michelle, and which colors would you recommend for skin tones for beginners, please? Um, so that would be just your three primary colors. The way I approach this is skin tone tends to be more pinkish or orange, right? So that's where I begin. A bit of red and a bit of yellow in varying ratios and a bit of water. And that will create an orange or a peach or a, or a um, pink then add a bit of blue to neutralize it because we're not orange, obviously. It's a variation, right? Um, that's what I would say uh, for light skin tones. Now, for dark skin tones, you and it's so funny because, like, you know, people, uh, our skin tones are not that different from one another. It's crazy to think, like, the very the variance is very small. If you add just a bit of more red or a bit more yellow or a bit of, you can get pretty much a huge range. So for dark skin tones, I will say reverse it. Use first, go for purple first and then neutralize it with yellow. So go for red and blue, dark, and then add yellow to make it a little brown, right? And even dark skin tones, it's not, it's not like, usually it's not going to be like, it's never going to be pitch black. It's going to be like a brown or a variation of an orange or a variation of a pink. So it's the same three primary colors for everything. We're not that different. <laughs> People uh, with different skin tones, we're not that different. We're, we, more, uh, we have more in common as the human race than separate. Hopefully that's a positive message for you all. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the Arg Nono, I have painted a lot with the Magic 3, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, and Yugen Bosch. Okay, I wasn't familiar with this as the Magic 3. That's really cool. Other palettes, I just mess up. How to use new palettes, aka using the rest of my 33 expensive paint tubes. Let me give you a twist. Try, if you're from, I keep reminding Mark Foley in each and every live stream here, but what I like about his work is that some paintings he does aren't with three uh, primary or three colors. It's just two um, from what I can remember. Try not using three colors, but just two. So try doing uh, Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. Or maybe try, if you're brave, doing something like a Viridian Emerald kind of phthalo green with yellow ochre or with quinacridone rose, right? Like a purple and green. If you're brave, try it out. Now, let me say one more thing. If you... <sighs> You mess up. Do you not like the result? Maybe you just don't like that combination. You know, don't force yourself. If you have a combination that works for you, that's great. Uh, the one thing it's lacking, in my opinion, is a bit of red, right? Because the burnt umber is kind of brown. So if you want more red and it looks like you're more used to the Velasquez palette, which is that muted blue or ultramarine blue that has a bit of warmth in it, and then the burnt sienna is your burnt umber, and then new gamboge is kind of the um, Indian yellow, lemon yellow, new gamboge, whatever it is. Um, you're, it seems like you're not used to having a strong red. So practice that. Uh, introduce a red, whether it's a Perlin red or a Pyrrol Scarlet even, which is a bit harder to control. Uh, but I would recommend like a Magenta or Quinacridone Rose and try and see how it mixes with Ultramarine and try and see how it mixes with New Gamboge separately and then figure out how what the, what ratios and combinations work for you. 
if you're just using three colors, it's hard to mess up. I, I actually would be curious to see what you mean by mess up. You know, um, maybe you just over mix. Maybe you just spend too much time mixing and you should uh, follow the video I just posted. Uh, less one. Just don't mix at all. <laughs> Check it out. Um, the Owl Spirit. Oh, my God. I love you. Thank you so much. Uh, Monica and Jay, good morning, Leroy. This, people are so nice. Thank you. Uh, Chuck Waffle Waffle ate that first file you're in. Uh, not sure what that means, Chuck, but uh, let me know in another uh, message. Uh, hey, Joyce, how are you? How many colors will you bring when you go outdoors sketching, and what are those? So I'll usually just use my favorite palette. So it will have 20-something or 12 colors, but I'll usually just use the same three. So ideally, just three, three primary colors. Um, here's what I would say. If you want the versatility, have your favorite primary color combination, and then if it doesn't contain the following steps, strengthen it with something like a burnt sienna that works very well with blues. Um, maybe you want to have a strong uh, green there that is hard to mix, like um, like a cobalt, turquoise, stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. Maybe have like a neutral tint if you want to mix dark colors fast. Uh, but it's going to be the same pretty much when I do outdoors. Now, you can think of your subject matter. And if you'll need a lot of greens, maybe it's best to have something that gives you the range. So let me give you an example. If you're going to use the Velasquez palette or the Magic 3, um, as uh, the Aragnono said, uh, you're going to get very neutral greens uh, with um, French Ultramarine and Yellow Ochre or New Gambos. So try having also something like a Thalo Blue. And with and lemon yellow, maybe even. And then you can use these to mix very bright greens and neutralize them with your red or with your brown, right? It gives you more freedom. It's like I always say, you can't really mix a phthalo blue out of French ultramarine or ultramarine blue, but you can go the other way around. You can mix something that is similar to French ultramarine from phthalo blue. So use the colors that give you the most versatility, is what I would say. And three to five is more than enough. Three to six, maybe, if you uh, include the black or neutral tint. Vespa Frigian, while you're your uh, digital manga art is fantastic. Thank you so much. Let me bring over the original one because this was, it didn't show it in full quality, I think. And I am quite proud of how this one turned out. Maybe you'll be able to see it better, like, yeah without the shine of the plastic bag. So let me take it out. That's going to be uh, the original. And it's a huge storm. I actually found a picture online a while ago with this huge storm in it. Completely inspired me to do a, a comic based on that. And I just drew it kind of as I see it. So the storm is the part I'm most proud of probably, but also this here. This turned out really the way I envisioned it. And also this panel, which is quite hard. Um, to do. It's a bit of a challenging angle. Um, and you know what's funny? Once you add the text, it turns into a story. Right now, it's just the art. As soon as you add the text, people will just blast through the art. They barely look at it. They only focus on the story is what I find about myself. I can look at something that has crazy um, quality art and just kind of skip it real fast because I read and the story is interesting, you know? Um, so just that. Let me put it back in the plastic. Now, if you're curious, I actually have... Let me show you. Everything starts simple. So this was my rough draft. And even prior to that, I had an even rougher draft. <laughs> you can see the text, though. If you pause it, you'll be able to read it. So the process to me, especially for manga... Connecting it to what you asked before um, about, you know, um, motivation to paint or just not painting. Um, that's the thing where I have a bit of, I don't want to say anxiety, but like I have a bit of an avoidance thing with this. Because every time I start a new page, I have no problem with building upon a draft. But just doing that first draft and figuring out how to divide a page is so hard because you have all the options in the world. You can do whatever you want. Um, so yeah, that's something a bit challenging. Uh, while you're on, that's amazing. I like how you move your camera. I don't know what you mean like this, the way I do this and, and show Ruth. Now she's in the corner again. Or do you mean like camera in terms of the drawing, the painting? I don't know. 
let me know. An NCG cool manga page. Wow, thanks for sharing. You got it. Uh, or do you maybe you mean the the manga page? I guess. Uh, Claire would love to see and paint some images from Tel Aviv. Building scenes would be amazing. Yeah, I'll try and include those when I do this page for you with all the uh, references. I still have it in my kind of mid mid term goals. I'll make sure to put enough uh, of those kinds of references too. Cityscapes are my favorite, so why not? M. Hussein Raza, how to make white color in home? Like from homemade materials? I have no idea, actually. By, by an acrylics paint uh, paint tube. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know how I would uh, make. If you, if you want to, sorry, you know, they say white contains all colors, but I don't think if you take all your acrylics, acrylic paints, I don't think they will produce a white color. So I don't know. Everyone loves Ruth. <laughs> yeah, we did a DNA test. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Hey Prema, how are you doing? Hope everything is well. Uh, Paula, that's so cute that you had uh, her DNA done. You really love her. Yeah, definitely. It was way too expensive too. Uh, truly a member of the family indeed. Yes. I have a really hard time uh, leaving her at home and going out actually because she cries sometimes. But, but you know, she's fine. She's used to it by now. Uh, hey, Alessandro, how are you doing? Uh, Christine says, I did a DNA test for my dog too. Chihuahua, Poodle, and Dashan. That's funny. Yeah, she's like a mix of tons of stuff and, and it i don't know how but it ended up perfect like her she looks so she looks almost like she could be not a mix i don't know why it's she has this very distinct look i don't see there is one dog in our neighborhood that looks somewhat similar but even that is really different I haven't seen anything like that the most similar combination that i've seen is corgi and uh, jack russell those look a little similar to her if you had a Frenchie as well, <coughs> but still not really that close. Uh, Marjorie, I think White Knight is best in expensive paint. Yeah, yeah, same. It's uh, artist grade. It's not student grade, but yeah. Prema, how to get vibrant colors with watercolor? Yeah, so that's something I'm working on too. When, when you say vibrant, the way I interpret it is bright. It's what I talked about earlier. How can you keep the saturation while leaving it light? Um, I'm experimenting with that. I wish I had a good answer for you. Today, I know to say I don't. Um, the only thing I can give you is that context, you know, that the idea of contextual. Uh, a color can look very vibrant if you surround it in a smart way with colors that complement it. Um, so that's something you want to think about. Also, when you look at a painting, don't think in terms of objects only, like this thing should be this color and that thing should be that color, but look at it like an abstract thing that has different colors in it and try and figure out okay maybe a blue will look really good surrounded by all these warm colors or vice versa you know i try to detach and this is something i haven't i've never talked about it's actually a good idea for a video okay let's see i'm gonna write it down for myself good idea um colors So that's going to be a good idea. Um, we're going to do a future video that may help with that. Because it's a new angle I never tackled it from. I think it's a good idea. But yeah, it's contextual. A lot of it is contextual. Surround it with colors that make it look vibrant. And make it lighter so that other shadows around it make it look brighter. You know, you get it, I think. Uh, Manette, how are you doing? Uh, good evening from the Philippines. Hey, Mark. Uh, hey, Leron. Sorry, got to relate. No worries. No worries. Thank you so much for being here. Oh my, Art, hello. What is your opinion about art block and what can you advise artists to have it? Yeah, so we kind of talked about that in a way. Um, I will throw at you the same thing from earlier. Like sometimes the self-judgment um, can be a bigger problem than the actual art block. Um, the answer is right in front of those artists who have art block. It's just to start doing. Um, action brings inspiration with it. Um, that's the best advice I can give, I think. Um, and I know it's hard to take that action. It's hard mentally, but you can physically do it. If you can physically do it, it will bring out sometimes that energy. Um, I, I didn't have that again with watercolor that much. Um, but, but the thing is, this is all self-generated. You know, usually it's not external circumstances. We create it. And understanding that we create these art blocks is the first step because 
you can remove them. You can decide to remove them. Um, I think it's also about knowing what you enjoy painting or doodling or sketching. Uh, that can really help because if you have something that's a go-to that you always enjoy, maybe you can start there. One more thing I will say is warm-up. If you just start doodling circles and lines and stuff, maybe you'll naturally bring yourself to, you know, do something more complex. That's how I usually I just get started with a warm-up and then it develops into something else. Um, a couple of things that I can throw at you. Um, maybe a, a different day, I'll, I'll be in a different mood, I'll have a different answer. Uh, but I hope that helps a bit. Uh, the argument only run. If you ask successful people, they will not say that they were just lucky. Yeah, it's not just, but it's a part of it, I think. Uh, Olivier, hi, Liron. Hi, all. Liron, tell us about mixing different brands, please. I'm fine with that. <laughs> uh, experiment. If if it works, it works. You know, sometimes it will work well, sometimes it won't. I wouldn't go like to um, if a pigment is made of three. If it's not a single pigment, if a tube has three pigments in it i just won't mix it with many more you know colors generally so introducing a different brand could be a bit problematic but i think the answer is in the mix i mean mix it if you like the way it looks that's that's my answer to you you can do that i don't think it's like don't mix artist and student great right uh, but everything that is just the same type you can go ahead and use that um i wouldn't mix light fastness too so just paint with light fast colors if you can uh, but yeah, that's my take on it. I have nothing against it, I think. Uh, I, Pablo. Hi, from Argentina. Hello. Uh, technical question. Um, not sure. Maybe we'll, well, you wrote it down below. We'll continue. Uh, Debbie, good morning from Tennessee. Love your tutorials. I just tried ink with watercolor and I'm in love. Hope you will do more videos on that, but not manga for me. Yeah, I have no knowledge in ink with watercolor. You know, the only ink I use is just for the manga. So interesting. If I ever get to try it out, if people ever convince me to try more ink, maybe I'll do uh, something about the combination. I do know that ink uh, can be very fun and beautiful to work with. So especially for people who are used to watercolor from what I hear. Uh, hello, Ravin Rev. How are you doing? Uh, Alessandro, can you tell me about the brush for smoothing edges with very short bristles? Uh, yeah, so John sent it to me. It's... It's right here. Let me get it. It's the Royal and Langnickel. This one. I have actually uh, more of these that I um, am planning on taking out of the box and experimenting with. But this one is the Zen series by Royal and Langnickel, uh, number six. Um, and it's really nice. It really does help blending. I find it useful for blending even after the paint dried. You can just scrub it and it will come off a bit or you can just dampen it a bit and then do that um the one thing that sometimes is not easy is if a paint is very staining you may not be able to get as much of a smoothening as you wish uh, it's a lot of it is about experimentation because i'm slowly improving my ability to control it sometimes you'll reawaken a dark paint but also the light paint underneath it so you kind of have to know what you're doing and play around with it i remember the first couple of times i used it i was like oh this is so easy this is so and then it became harder because i started I, something i got lucky and you can see this uh, live actually uh, not a lot. Maybe it was live, actually. I did a video painting two clouds. Same formation, but different um, techniques. And you can see it there. I used this brush and it worked perfectly. It was really easy to use. And then with time, it became harder to use just because I, I figured that the neutral tint I was using back then and the, the the value was light, so it was easier. But then the more I used it in different paintings, it was like, oh, it was just luck the first time. Not luck, you know, luck. I got lucky that the first time I used it was in ideal circumstances. So it's not easy, but it's all about playing around with it. I hope you'll give it a go. Um, I would honestly just get one if you can, not the entire set, because you only really need the small size. Um, if you're going to use a larger size, and this format works really well. It's thin, it's very versatile. Uh, maybe maybe if you really want to lift like hairs, literal hairs of fur, then you need a thinner brush. But for everything else, it's really good. Jill, I've had good results using my hairdryer on cool on the cool setting and not holding too close. Oh, interesting. So just uh, air basically, or maybe cool or lukewarm 
uh, wind, not hair. Wind. Yeah, that could work. Mark, is watercolor painting a popular art practice where you live? Is there a local group, an urban sketchers group, for example? Um, it is pretty popular. Uh, Israel has a lot of people from Eastern Europe, and watercolors are very popular in Eastern Europe, and they bring it uh, with them. And so um, the few heads of groups and people are very dominant in the field um, are Eastern European, whether it's Russian, Ukrainian, um, all around the area, Romanian. Um, so there is quite a lot of that. At least that's how it is here. Of course, people paint from all over the world, right? But uh, I do know that in Eastern Europe, it's a part of the school curriculum or it was in the past. So it was very popular, especially among people who are now a little older. Um, with that, there is there are a few local groups of watercolor. Um, there are there is a relatively nice community. There are local competitions. It's not as big as in the U.S., of course, or U.K., of course, or Australia even. Uh, but it's pretty it's pretty popular. Um, I created one of the biggest groups actually. Um, started it maybe two years ago. Uh, it's not that big even, but yeah, there are big art groups like drawing, especially drawing is very popular. Drawing, sketching, concept art digital art stuff like that is very popular uh but watercolor too i think it's decent i never relied on local stuff for this but i always went global because we're a small country to begin with uh wes i definitely recommend all things etcher i tried their everyday sketchbook and just got the perfect sketchbook absolutely love them cool good to know Laura, I'm hoping someone here can help. When watching the live stream on my phone, I can chat publicly, but on my tablet, the option isn't available. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe it's a software update thing. Laura, maybe you need to... Like, my my iPad can barely even have YouTube on it and work properly because it's so old, and I can't upgrade update the iOS because it's an old iPad, so I'm stuck with apps that don't work. I don't know. Um, yeah, sorry. Morwen, how are you? Hi, everyone from Italy. No questions for you, Liron. I love to hear your recommendations. Sorry for Ray. Oh, your English is perfect. I understand everything. It's not my first language anyway, too. Uh, Rolf, how are you doing, my friend? I'm here representing Norway. Only to tell you uh, that at least one P making painting set for children give our young a brush they can believe in. Trust on making their maybe first artistic work. Yeah, that's a great advice, actually. Uh, I, I agree with that. Completely. Well, just tell you Norway is following you carefully. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I have quite quite a bit of following in Norway. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that's going to be some Norway slang I'm unfamiliar with. Uh, Patricia, uh, Eric does paint. He does plan air events here in uh, New Hampshire uh, and in the Adiron. Adirondex? Not familiar. I've seen some of his oil paintings at a gallery here in uh, New Hampshire. Good stuff. He does all the Planet Air live events too. Yeah, and I think he's a great example. Dr. Martin is right, Claire. Thank you for, for reminding me. Right. Um, I think Eric's a great example. Of, I'm just not familiar with... Again, I wasn't familiar. I didn't, I didn't know exactly what his art is like, but He's a great example of someone using their gifts to the, to, I think, to the fullest extent. It's, re, it's really impressive what he does. You know, um, building a career that is not just the art, but also the publication, information, events. What he does in a way is very different from what I do. Um, and, and that's great. That's really fantastic, you know, doing all of these, um, what do you, there's like the plain air conventions and stuff like that. That's huge. That's like production, like creating stuff. Very, very different, very foreign to me. Um, but it's a really, really impressive thing. And he's not only an artist, but he's clearly a businessman. So, yeah, way to go. And I, I we're so far away from all of these events geographically could be cool to have something local here to that size you know um but yeah uh and thank you again claire for reminding me uh real life is so is too tough is that's why it always confuses me to fly like two not two t-o-o ph martin only shares the light fest rating for the hydrus line yeah that's the one i'm familiar with all the other lines they produce aren't shared because they tend to be dyes not pigments that's why i say be careful oh okay i get it I was only familiar with the Hydrus line. 
That's the one I heard. I remember now. Uh, I, Pablo, Nicolas Lopez from Peru is a non-traditional aquarelle painter. I agree. Yep, that's true, actually. He does have the more traditional, if you want to call it, like, um, you know, cityscapes, but they're, and they're very much in his style. But yeah, a lot of almost abstract work, the way he uses sand, even all sorts of powders. That's really, really cool. Yep. Yeah, I did a painting masters on him. You can watch. Uh, maybe you have. Uh, Tom, I was properly triggered by I hate that it's so hard to rewind stuff. I just pushing videos over images, trying to be TikTok. But their video controls are terrible. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But once you pause it, and if you have a small enough of a finger, you can you can kind of scroll. Uh, but yeah. Hey, AKG. Hope you're doing super well. Hey, Brannigan Farm Girl. Uh, Liron, did you already answer my question about the length of bristles you use with the Tracy Levinson brush? Um, I don't remember. Oh, I well, I have a bunch of them, but the one... I think I answered this in the past. The one I use the most, which is this one, which is about, if I'm not mistaken, an inch... 1.2 inches, I would say, for this one that I use the most, the large goat hair. And if that's not the one you refer to, let me know and I can pull out the other brushes and, and check for you. Or send me an email and I'll, I'll check it for you. Uh, Brock, do you know if there is an age limit for selling in galleries? Ooh, that's interesting. I think it will really vary on where you're, where you're located, right? Um, I have no idea. Age limit for selling in galleries. Like the artist's age, I guess. Um, not the painting's age, right? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Really, really will vary. I think if your art is good, they will accept you pretty much no matter what. But, yeah, if you have a good... Like, if you're a celeb, it doesn't matter, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, Almeida. Thank you for making this free from Philippines. Yeah, you got it. My pleasure. These conversations are really, really fun. Uh, Mark, good advice about when to do more of your own creative work. Oh, yep, yep. That's important. Nancy G, I like that classes help motivate me to paint, and I really like the teacher and students. Yep. And then you can take it as motivation and do something of your own. I, I personally like it. feels better for me to do something of my own, even if the result is more inferior, you know. Uh, Daiji, regarding, did you just change your uh, avatar? That's really cool. Regarding not feeling like doing something ex executive dysfunction, I'm not sure what that is. Um, I know about the avoidance personality or something like that. Executive dysfunction. I wasn't familiar with that. Term for a range of cognitive, emotional, behavioral difficulties, which often occur after, oh, but that's after an injury. Yeah, so that's different. Uh, Ellen, you got it. Uh, Marjorie, I left painting and just did sculpture, necklace to large wall hanging for 20 years. It has been interesting. Now disabled. Yeah, that, that has to be hard, I guess. Uh, but can you paint, Marjorie, now? Uh, I remember we talked a while back. Let me know. Um, you can answer the email too. Um, maybe you haven't. I missed it. I'll go back and check. Kaniz, I just uh, got a... 0.26 dollar paint can i paint something good yes you can you can as long as it can as, you, as long as you can see it on paper when you put it you can um the paint is the quality is of course important but it, there's more to it than that of course the way you use it is much more important very often mark don't worry about success or failure in art or anything they are both imposters just be in the moment enjoy the creative process and see where it takes you if you get stuck do painting exercise yeah that, i think that's a pretty good kind of straightforward um wisdom i guess um a lot of it comes down to you know are you happy are you even happiness in a way is like you know, it's tricky. <laughs> what do you think about it? Like, do you want to be happy all the time and not have any challenges and not, you know, I don't know, we're going deep. <laughs> uh, hey, Marita, how are you doing? Uh, thank you so much for always being super supportive and being here. Much appreciated. Patricia, I just bought a box of Crayola crayons called Colors of the World, designed for coloring different skin tones. Great that they produce this product. Yeah, really cool. And you don't even have to go that far and like buy anything specific. You can do it with pretty much anything. But it's nice to have some premixes too, I guess. Dazzling action. Hello to the chat. Hey, how are you doing? Uh, Gooming An, blue 
uh, and red. Which color do you like more? That's a tough one. You know, I usually say that blue is my favorite, but then I also really like warm colors like yellow, orange, and red. But when you compare two colors together, it's very hard because I really like both. If you would say green and red, I would say red, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's tricky. It's really hard, really hard to say. Uh, hey, Dwayne, how are you doing, my friend? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the nice comments, too, by the way, on the videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, I answered most of them, if not all of them. Uh, Wendy, hello, everyone from not so sunny Florida, USA. Uh, a lot of artists seem to prefer French ultramarine to regular ultramarine. Do you have a preference? Honestly, I probably could not tell the difference. <laughs> so, so simple in that way. So, no, I don't. Uh, I do know one of them granulates and the other doesn't, right? Um, I like both. I really do. I don't care. I don't care about texture as much. I don't care if it's present. I don't care if it's not present. I just like the, the colors more. Uh, Marina, I started bringing two blues, a lavender along with a split primary. Yeah, two blues, I guess it could be useful. Even though, again, some blues are um, superior to others, I think. But lavender, that's really useful. It's like kind of the John Brilliant I use in, in that it's a little more opaque, right? Uh, that's very useful. I find the, the white white opaque color I've been using. And I, I also now have just a white, like a Chinese white or something like that by Windsor Newton. John, thank you so much for sending me that one. Um, that um, I just really enjoy. It looks good. Um, Erica M, love these videos always. Any thought on mixing gouache with watercolor? I don't have enough experience with that. I use them both often pretty well with success, but haven't had success mixing them. Yeah, I just never tried gouache, so I cannot know. I do know some people do that. And I think it works. Um, I don't remember if... Um, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name. Gouache. Uh, James James Gurney. Yeah. Uh, if I haven't, didn't even need to continue searching. I remembered while I was typing. James Gurney, I think he uses them together and it works. I think he uses them both in sometimes in a single painting. So it should work. Uh, Johnson Williams, do you did you go to drawing art school or did you pursue... Any degree for your painting? Nope, nothing. Just this. Didn't didn't even do our equivalent of an SAT. Just did high school educated, then army as everyone goes here, and then eventually uh, just started a business around drawing and painting. Never did any formal um, art education. I did learn from quite a few online stuff, online courses, videos, stuff like that. But yeah, I think I'm... Um, I'm, I'm more representative of a lot of people who just go for their art, you know. Um, there is some value to school, I think, but not for me. Not if you want to build a business, then it's kind of secondary, I think. Uh, Mark, can you do a painting of Kibbutz Zikim? I was there as a volunteer in 1979. I'd love to see a beautiful painting of the volunteer hut, if they're still there. That's interesting. I don't. I'm not even sure if it's still there. Um, let's see. I can do something similar. I don't. I think things have changed greatly since, uh, but I I can do it. Let's see. I'll see if I can find a nice scene. Maybe I'll do something like that. It's writing down so I don't forget. Good. Got it. Um, Christina making colors. <laughs> Making Colors Sing is excellent book for creating bright colors in watercolor. Yep, that's a great recommendation. Unbound by Tiffany. Good morning from Hawaii. Oh, that's super cool. Uh, I've been wondering what watercolor paper you use or which ones. Uh, so my favorite is actually Saunders Waterford. And they stopped bringing it here. Um, Saunders Waterford is the name again. I can write it actually like that. Saunders Waterford. Arsh is second. So they stopped uh, bringing them here. Uh, and then Arsh is my second favorite. And nothing else. I Oh, Bao Hong too. Bao Hong is good too. Uh, but other than these three, um, Bao Hong. I didn't really find anything that I liked enough. Uh, so yeah. But I hope that answers the question. <clears throat> it's very tricky. You know, watercolor paper has to be really like, work perfectly for me. Um, I do want to try out more hot press because I'm just doing cold press for the most part. Uh, have you tried Magello, Mission Gold, Pure Pigment? Nope. Uh, so I don't have thoughts. Unfortunately, everyone says I should try them. And hopefully I will. 
Unsplash is my favorite photo inspiration site. Yeah, yeah, Unsplash is good. Now, if you're just talking inspiration, I would actually go to Pinterest too and Google Images. But if we're talking about things you can paint from and it's royalty free, I think Unsplash is paid, right? Um, so the other ones I mentioned, but Unsplash is good too. It's really good. Uh, and oh my God, yes, I love both my HP uh, hot press and cold press etcher everyday sketchbooks. They're fabulous. Cool. That's really cool. A lot of people seem to like them. Uh, Dwayne, how did you get into watercolor? So the answer is simple. I started with drawing and sketching. Then I found out about the urban sketching movement. And then I saw people like Mark Taro Holmes who incorporate watercolor into their um, uh, sketches, urban sketches. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. I started doing that. And then I discovered artists like Joseph Zbukovic and Alvaro Kestene when I was trying to improve my watercolor skills. And I was blown away. I was like, whoa, you can paint watercolor this way instead. The rest is history. <laughs> um, yep. Toenail, are you single? Nope, I'm not. Uh, Shanze, uh, how are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for the nice comments, by the way, the recent ones. Uh, those are uh, been super duper kind. Since how many years are you painting with watercolor? I started 2015, I think. So that's six years, uh, seven years now, something like that, if I got my math right. Uh, about seven years, I would guess which is not that long, but actually is a long time <laughs> simultaneously. Anthony Coach, uh, Liron, I have a question for you. I've always wondered. I watch literally all of your videos. Thank you so much. And uh, they never have adverts. Did you monetize your channel? So actually, some of my old videos, I went, uh, I think two years ago, I went back and turned on ads for like the most viewed videos. Uh, so that's maybe... 20 or 15 out of the however many videos do I have now? Let's check. You're on watercolor. You're on. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I think it should be 993. It's going to be 1,000 soon. Um, but I don't do any ads on any of my new videos at all, ever. Um, the reason is very simple. I hate ads. I don't like to wait. And I don't want you to have to wait to watch my videos. I want you to always just click on them and watch them immediately. Um, and everyone says, you know, YouTube, it's very, um, everyone has ads, right? Everyone has ads and it's very understandable. And viewers already know that they will get ads. It's literally like the platform itself. It's part of the platform. I don't care. <laughs> if I can not have ads, I won't have ads. Um, I don't care. First off, it's not that great of an income uh, for every thousand views you get like two four bucks something like that so an average video of mine does like three thousand views so that's what seven eight ten bucks a video i do three videos a week so that's 30 times four that's 120 extra dollars a month i could sell five courses and make the same um so why would i have all of you <laughs> watching the videos, having to wait and having to skip ads and and put something in the way of you watching and maybe just buying my products, buying a painting, uh, joining the Patreon tier. I have my own products. I don't need YouTube's monetization. That's the bottom line. Um, and I think in the numbers, I'm probably the numbers I'm doing right now, it would probably make much more than that because you have the backlog of videos. So if you do if you put ads on each and every video, you so for the new videos, you have maybe, in this example, 120 bucks a month, but then you have all the back catalog, which keeps getting views with time, right? So I don't know, maybe a couple of hundred, maybe maybe I'll get 2,000, maybe a bit more, but uh, it's not worth it, in my opinion. I really, really don't like ads, and I don't like to wait. So why would you, why, why would I put you through that? Even like when I do paid ads, um, myself for my own products. Um, even there, I try to use the format that I like. So I do Facebook ads, and then you can just scroll. You don't have to wait, right? It's not a pre-roll ad. It's not a before a video. So I don't like ads that are time wasted. It's really a pet peeve of mine, which is why I'm going on this tangent talking about it so much. I just really dislike it. Really dislike ads. Um, so yeah, by the way, I just want to make sure um, onto the schedule. I'll have to probably wrap it up soon. Um, but I just want to check something. So forgive me for that just a second.
Okay. Um, next, Dwayne. Uh, I bought your draw anything course, getting the water. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, good. Uh, Diana. Uh, have a look at Tom Shepard's work. His birds are amazing. Vibrant. Yeah, yeah. I love his birds. He's really, really good. And by the way, I have a collab with him. Check it out. Uh, I also did an interview with Tom. I uploaded it to my channel as well. Um, and also, uh, I took part in a video he created with a lot of other painters. Uh, kind of everyone gives their best uh, watercolor tips. Uh, he's really good. I love his channel. Um, Eldon Sowers. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Tom, on opaques, I've been having a lot of fun with Naples yellow for light highlights and also Sennelier's warm gray, which can be good for stone on its own or mixed with anything, obviously. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, did you share? I'm curious to see if you can share on the Discord I will and tag me. Um, I want to see, especially the warm gray. I'm curious to what it looks like. Um, if you have tag me in it, I'll, I'll, I want to I want to see it because I'm now really playing around with more opaque paints. It's fun. Uh, Marina says I need to uh, join Brilliant. Yeah, it's just such a great color. You can find a lot of alternatives to it too. I think Daniel Smith's uh, Buff Titanium is very similar. Uh, but yeah. But the the thing is, John Brilliant by Shin Helen PWC is like half the price. It's much cheaper brand and it's still good. Uh, Unbound uh, by Tiffany. Wow, really? I'm amazed. I think I've tried it and wasn't a fan, but I love Arsh, of course, but I always get so scared to waste such gorgeous players. Yeah, that's a that, the moment I was able to let go of like fear of wasting materials, I really had a much better time painting. Um, but yeah, it is hard, especially at first. Especially at first. Uh, I think I've tried every cotton water color paper, both hot press and, and word press, cold press. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, and splash is, is free, no account need. Yeah, but but the are the images um you know, can you paint it? Do they have commercial like license or you know whatever best landscape photos i've ever found you know shutterstock is really good too but that's also paid of course um should have said reference photos not inspiration but same same for me yeah definitely and definitely for people i don't know if you're like that but if you paint stuff for yourself you could use whatever you want you know um yo man what's up i hear you are a cool painter thank you hisham thank you i did a suggestion how to start for beginners yeah that's a very uh general question i would say whatever you like and want to create <coughs> whether it's manga style or you know watercolor drawing whatever it is just do it just to start there you know, I just went straight to what I want. I wanted to do drawing. I practiced drawing. I then found out, discovered watercolor. I just went all in on that and painted a lot of hours a day until I felt very comfortable with the medium. That's that's the best way to start. Um, there are best practices to any field you choose. Um, if you're going to do drawing, Proko, again, Stan Proko Penko, free content on YouTube is, I think, the best. Watercolor, you can browse the channel, find a lot of um stuff for beginners for advanced um but i think a big part of it is being very um self-motivated to just push yourself to try new things you know that's i think a very important um i guess aspect that i think a lot of people who are successful in art and by successful i mean they like their own art uh, have in common just that ability to self-motivate um and to strive yourself to you know you you have to be more motivated than the people teaching you, right? If the teacher is more motivated than the student, there's a problem. So that's what I would say. Uh, Shanze, uh, oh, thanks, Duran. I've never enjoyed anyone's YouTube vid so much like yours. Thank you so much. To be honest, I literally open up YouTube just to see uh, for any of your notifications. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, you're my inspiration. Keep it up. Thank you so, so much, Shanze. Thank you so much. Luckily, I'm very predictable with the days I post. Uh, so yeah. Hope I could help Hisham, by the way. Uh, Lisa T, I took your recommendations on the painting of the roses on the fence. It looks uh, so much better. Thank you. Oh, that's really cool. I'm very happy to hear. Uh, Marjorie, and that had been it. Uh, not sure. It's been a while since your previous chat, so I don't know. So we have a lot of chats. I think I'll... Okay, I'll finish what's uh, here so far. It's like maybe 10 more messages, and then we'll start wrapping this one up. Uh, I have a bit more work to do. Either my voice is getting tired, so we'll see. Uh, and about you're amazing. Thank you for all these videos. You got it. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm, it's my. I'm. I'm 
grateful to be able to do this, really. Uh, Patricia, I've been painting inspirational messages for Ukraine uh, to get my emotions onto paper. Yesterday, I designed my own sunflower uh, with the word peace in the middle. That's really cool. Would love to share. Yeah, um, I don't remember. Did you send me that painting? Someone sent me something that sounds similar, and I still haven't gotten the chance to respond, but I will. Uh, let me know. Where's a good place to share our artworks? Um, that would be, I think, Instagram is one of the more popular ones. Facebook is still pretty much alive. Uh, Twitter, too. I think these are the main platforms. Um, TikTok is huge, but I know a lot of people don't like it. But TikTok is actually works. People see your work. So, yeah. Uh, Mark, thank you for considering to paint Kibbutz Zikim. Even if it has changed a lot, it would still be lovely to see. I love your response to uh, YouTube advertising. If only all the YouTubers were like that. Yeah, yeah, if only. Uh, but I get it. You know, the the financial um, the financial um, leverage, it's just too big, you know, especially if you get hundreds of thousands of views. That's really money on the table. So I can't really blame uh, anyone who uses it. Plus, some people don't have their own product. So that's kind of the ad, you know, uh, that's the way they make money. Even though today you really don't have an excuse because YouTube has this membership thing where you can join a channel and then people can monetize that way. So you kind of don't have to use ads. Uh, but yeah. Um, and I don't know if, if I ever visit the kibbutz itself, which is unlikely to happen in the near future. But if I do, I'll take a picture. And I'll send you something. Uh, Victor, no ads in your video will get even more popularity thanks to that. Yeah, that's my thing. I just w want no friction, if possible. Ruth wants to go out. She just stands next to the door and cries. <laughs> and if I wasn't a follower yet, I definitely would hit that button now. Uh, love your philosophy towards life and your insight. Thank you so much. Very happy. To hear. Uh, you have a Discord server or ID? Yeah, we do. Actually, there is a Discord server, Shanze. Um, let me do a link. I'll send a link. We'll get another wave of people joining. Um, we're, uh, I don't know what this is. Is it pop up? I don't know. Ask me later. Uh, invite, invite, invite. How do I invite here? Invite people. Um, Cop. So this invitation will be good for seven days. If you see it after uh, seven days from this live stream, it won't be good anymore. So I just posted it, Chanze. You can join there. Uh, Dwayne, I sent you a message on Instagram. Wanted to ask something privately. Yeah, I think I saw it. I'm I plan to go. It's funny that you say. Let me read you my task. In a task for today. Interact on IG messages especially. Literally, that's how I phrase it. Let me tell you what else I have in store for today. So I have to do some physiotherapy, posture uh, exercises, personal growth time. That's I do every morning, Instagram. And then I just post the daily content. I don't have much today. I schedule less stuff on Thursday because of the live stream. Uh, maybe I'll do some more drawing practice. Today is really a chill day. It's usually not like that. Oh, sh I have to do something else. I have to... Um... Yeah, I have to contact a couple of publishing houses. Okay, that's another thing I forgot about. Uh, so I have quite a lot of things to do. But I will I will catch your message. Sorry for the delay. Patricia, I have been told by my instructor to paint like I'm a millionaire. I never put out enough paint. Tend to save my best paper for that masterpiece. Use the best. That's actually a great advice, even if, if it's not like um, regarding materials. Like... For me, if I paint like I'm a millionaire, I will never paint to satisfy an audience, but rather for myself. Uh, so that's a great tip generally, I think. It's funny. Uh, born again, farm girl. I'm back now. Have a granddaughter for spring break. Oh, that's fun. That's really fun. Uh, enjoy. Enjoy your time. Time is valuable. And, uh, you know, spending time with people we love is... It's just important. You never know. You never know how much time we have. Uh, and talking about that, you hate ads too. Yeah. And I, because we don't have an endless amount of time on this planet, I don't want to waste yours with ads. Uh, PS, I will be joining your Patreon account after this session. Thank you so much. And cool about Discord. I have an account there too. So yeah, you can join. Just use the link. Uh, Nancy says, thank you. Thank you, Liron, for the inspiration. And with that, we're good. Two hours and four minutes. We can wrap it up. Um, this has been great. Now, if you sent me a message on Instagram and I haven't obviously answered these today, I will answer via Instagram. Okay. So I won't miss any of your questions there. Um, it's just going to take a bit of a while. Um, but yeah. 
I should have had them prepared in advance, but uh, yeah. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Arlu. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I couldn't have done what I'm doing without you, so I really do appreciate it. It's honestly amazing. I, I every day I take a moment. I'm like, wow, I'm so grateful that I can, uh, you know, make make a living from my art. Um, and it took a long time. Like it's been nine years now that I have the business, and it's just year by year, slowly, slow growth, slow growth. Uh, and I would like to be able to continue providing as much free content as I can. And then if someone wants something more, you know, specific, specialized structure, then you can, you know, of course, always check out the links. And I've been told I should uh, talk more about these. So everything is going to be in the description box and you can find a Patreon link or just search Leronian, Patreon Leronian. You should find it, no problems. Uh, I have all my links on the channel as well. Super grateful to anyone who joins, super grateful to anyone who watches the videos, who likes them. If you can drop a like, like a finish a live stream finishing like, uh, and I will talk to you again. Uh, long may you run, Liron. Thank you so much, Mark. I will see you all again soon. Thank you so much, and look forward to Saturday's video. It's going to be a fun one, I think.